times rp squared times omega 2 squared plus mass of rod, acceleration of gravity of rod times what is the initial height of the rod? From where h is equal to zero. Negative two point five two, or just three, right? Negative three. What? Negative one point five. We work with the center of it. Mm -hmm. You're working with the center. Oh, okay. So negative. Failed over two. Out of room. Plus mass of putty g. Negative parts of g. Now, it might benefit us to stick numbers in at this point just to simplify it. But let's think about what our knowns are. We know we know RP, we know G, we know MP. I did not state this. Let's assume it takes place somewhere near the surface of the Earth. We know L, we know G, we know M sub R. We know R sub P, we know M sub P. L sub R, M sub R. Our only unknown is omega 2, the angular speed just after the collision. Once we know that, we can plug that into here because we know all the rest of this stuff and we can solve for the speed of the putting just before collision. And so for some sense of closure, let's do some numbers. Uh, that we can bring over to the other side. And factor out omega two, so we have omega two squared, and then we'll have one sixth, what's going on, one kilogram, times one, times three squared, plus one half times two, times 2.5 squared. And on this side, I've got mass of rod, which is one times 9.8 times negative 1 point, oh, I added this, 1.5, plus two times 9.8 times 2.5. G is always a positive number. Yeah. Say always, unless there's anti-gravity. This will equal something just absolutely stunning. That's 34.3. For the right-hand side? Yes. So 34.3. And then this bit right here. I got 7.75. And so therefore, my annular velocity just after collision Not that we need it right now, but what are the units? Um, units per Wait. Radians per second? Yeah. Oh. Radians per Mass of putty, RP, which is 2.5 times VP, equals 
this bit right here, which should be just twice that, it should be 15.5. Because we just did the one third ml squared and the in r squared times this half here. So if we factor the half out, the 7.75 should be half of that. Right, because we should multiply it by 2. So what's the speed of the plane? Initial speed of the plane. All right, so that's 30 something divided by 5. So it's going to be 6. That's 6.85. It's a fun little problem. <laughs> All right, shifting gears, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday we're gonna do, all right, there's that multiple choice test thing that you took the beginning, that just for me to get a feel for where people were. Uh, I think Wednesday is a good day for that to be the actual, to do it for a test. And I'm not quite sure how to you study for it. It's, to me, it's a frame of mind. It, almost all Newton's laws. So if you've been working, if you've been working on the test 1B corrections, you would have gotten that reinforced. But F equals MA. And then the relationship of position, velocity, and acceleration. Those are that's basically what the test is. So that Wednesday, and then we'll get into the vibrational motion. Um, and then I need to have some stuff back. That test on Wednesday is like our last test, right? Say it again? You said that, that test, the test on Wednesday, that's our last test, right? No, no, that's the multiple choice test that you're doing in two days. And then next week is the last test. That's the, you need a calculator for the test. Okay. Is that on Wednesday of next week? Or? Yes. Okay. Because Thursday of next week is the end of the course. Gotcha. Is it the chapter uh, seven, eight, nine? Chapter seven, eight, nine? Ten. Seventeen? Whatever we whatever topic we start, I think it's chapter, is it 17, 18, 16, 17, something like that. Seven, chapter seven. Seven, eight, nine and 10. Is this, is this nine? Is this? this is, I think this is officially 10. I think nine dealt with. Rotational. Well, I was thinking nine and 10 both dealt with rotational. Nine was more specifically. Uh, Momentum. No, I, you know what? I could actually just grab a book. Statics and torque, that's nine. So the latter problem would have been chapter nine. Chapter 10 is rotational motion as opposed to rotational lack of motion. And then Wednesday, yeah, do 16 on Wednesday. Some 16 and 17 on Wednesday. I do 16 and 17. I, I flip back and forth between the two. I'm not saying we'll do all of 16 on Wednesday. So, so the test on Wednesday, that's on, you said Newton's laws, which is like test 1B, and it's also going to be on what we learned. So it's just 1B and 1A? Yeah. 
it's the multiple choice test that the the class took on the first day. Oh, it's okay. that. It's that exact same test. So is it uh, about test one A? And B. Test one A was the relationship of the position, velocity, acceleration. Test one B was about forces. The multiple choice test dealt with both of those. So it doesn't have much to do with energy principles at all. It's just no. I mean, some of the, with keeping energy in mind or momentum in mind, you might be able to look at it and go, oh, okay, I forgot the Newton's law stuff, but okay, energy applies here. Uh, is there any, like, example questions? Because I forgot to test like, what the questions are. As in, is there a test for you to look at to help? Like, example question. Like, uh, well, you've had it before, so if you remember any of them, you got those. I, I have some of those conceptual questions I actually have sprinkled in various tests. A lot of them were like, what was the path of the object dropped off the plane or something? Just the other oh, one, that like one. Path. I remember that one, yeah. yeah. It asked about like objects pushing against each other. Yeah. A lot, yeah. A lot. 50% of the test was that concept. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're, if you're doing forces, you've got to have one thing acting against another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the test. And then the following Wednesday, again, Wednesday of next week, that's the, the calculator one. Have you ever had a student do worse the second time? For a, for a while there, I did have at least one student every class who some, some like did worse. Uh, but then I had a couple semesters in a row where no one did. But most people do better. The, the average score usually is double. Now, I would like to think it, this group is going to do differently. This group will, you know, triple it. Of course. <laughs> or we'll barely improve it because we did so very well the very first time. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I was going to say, are you saying we did bad the first time around? Like, <laughs> did you ever give us the scores back on that? I think you gave us like a general idea of how everybody did. Yeah, I, I mean, if you if I showed it to you, you'd see what your how many you got right out of thirty. Yeah. And every third problem would be underlined. That's because when I'm grading it, I, I enter three at a time, so okay. I underline every third one for me. So it's not marked which ones are right or wrong. It's just how many you've gotten right. And. Like my handwriting on the back, someone else's handwriting on the front. Oh, I know what that is. That's... Are those the master sets? There are various master sets labs, things like that. Before I accidentally 